Okay, this one is a little bit of a different one because today's news is about yours truly. Because I just got back from one of the most surreal experiences of my life. I was invited by the European Space Agency not only to fly with one of their astronauts for zero gravity space training, but also along with the dozens of scientists and researchers while they carried out their experiments. And you might have seen zero G flights before, but nothing like this. Because need I say more? Oh, and not just that, they also make the flight more dangerous. Great. I mean, in our little safety briefing that they do before you take off like every other plane, they had an extra step. You see that? That's a smoke hood. Yeah, and it's basically because these experiments have electronics, toxic chemicals, and all sorts, which create a larger fire hazard than on a regular plane. So you need that. Fun! But seeing all of this in the spirit of science, I decided to conduct an experiment of my own. I said I wanted to carry out the first news report for you guys with zero gravity. Look at this. Is Daily Mail giving you this kind of information? <laughs> yeah. Harder than I thought. I also filled up three to four vomit bags. I forgot to pee before the flight, so I had to go in this thing instead of a toilet. And yes, I made the cameraman film the whole thing. I don't know if I should say you're welcome. Oh, and also my head took one too many beatings. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So, with all of that being said, let me take you through the craziest flight I have ever been on, and let's get... Astronomical... Astronomical cra I don't know, Kraken! Now, Dylan, try not to die. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know where I am. So, on Wednesday last week, I turn up to this place in Bordeaux, France, right? And <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, okay? The Uber, first of all, couldn't find it. When I did arrive, it's just like this gate and this building which is under renovation. And then I was greeted by Eric Cantona. <laughs> Turns out, though, that this was the super genius version, named Neil. And as soon as I got in, Neil, uh, freaking gave me some very comforting words. Am I gonna be okay today? Very, very few people have ever left us on a stretcher. <laughs> few, few. Let's not talk about numbers. <laughs> You'll probably be fine, and if not, we'll mail the pieces home. But then Neil lifts my mood by uh, telling me that I get my own flight suit. Not permanently. To get to keep these though, as you can see. And it was an actual flight suit that astronauts use. But then he dropped my mood way back down when he told me why I get my own suit. So we've got a lot of different experiments on board. Some of them uh, have high temperatures, some of them have toxic chemicals. So you want something that's flame resistant, you want something that's, <laughs> that's chemical God. resistant. Ju just in case there's a problem, you know, we, we hope for the best, we plan for the worst. So this is made of Nomex. It's the same stuff as the astronauts' flight suits. And this uh, will protect you in case anything goes wrong, well, from most things, at least. So, I tried this suit on, and it fits like a glove. And before you say anything, it was actually a medium, all right? Medium's pretty damn good. I could go to space Give us without any training. No, no, the other way. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we then headed out to the airfield, which came with extremely high security, multiple passport checks, and also my own uh, special permission card. I'm sure it's got its own name. But then, as we walk on over to the plane, uh, good old Neil, I mean the man who I swear made it his mission to take any ounce of confidence I might have had before, and burn it in hell. Because he starts filling me in on all of the details around what I'm about to get put through and experience. A computer would say, that's too unsafe. You can't do that. A modern Airbus would stop you from doing it. Yeah. But because we've got mechanical control, it can't stop us from doing it. So all of the computer alarms will go off, meh, 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 and we just ignore them and carry on flying. We fling this plane up in the air as hard as we can until it's 50 degrees nose up. At the very apex, we've lost so much speed. We are below the stall speed of the aircraft. 
<laughs> wait, wait, what? The slow speed we are going at the top of the parabola, this aircraft couldn't, couldn't fly if it wanted to. But that's okay, we don't want to fly. We want to fall. Okay. And if I we think fall, I might pull this off. Um, <laughs> we have to fall to pick up enough speed for the wings to start working again. It's not working. It, working is the key word there. We have 20 seconds of double gravity on the way up, 20 seconds of zero gravity on the way over, 20 seconds of double gravity again on the way out. That takes about a minute. We're going to do it to you every three minutes for two hours. <laughs> two hours of this? Yeah. 31 times is actually crazy. I, know, I think surely by the end of the 30, you, you get used to it or no? Oh, no. But also, as we head up to the plane, I say, can I see the cockpit? And oh my lord, I'm gonna say it right now, okay? I do not believe that every pilot, nay, no pilot would know off the top of their head what every single controller in there does, all right? I don't care what you're gonna say, I don't believe it. This is ridiculous. It's, it's, but that, that's a standard aircraft. This is, uh, this is nothing special. We haven't really changed anything apart from these two uh, extra, extra screens. But don't ask too much about them, otherwise I have to press the ejector seat. <laughs> what? Where? No, oh, come on, let's go. <laughs> now, when it was finally time to actually take off and leave Arth, um, they keep actually a, a few seats, a handful of seats right at the back, you know, for taking off, landing, for all of the scientists and researchers. And me, I guess. <laughs> but, this is when I found out how old the plane was. <laughs> Just watch this. When was this built, this plane? Uh, quite a while ago. Look what they have. This, that is for smoking. It's, it's called an ashtray. <laughs> so we take off, all goes well, no matter how old the plane is. And then the big moment starts to finally arrive. Hearts are pounding, nerves are flickering. I don't know what nerves do, but it was coming. Okay, so wait, when, when it goes back to 2G, yeah. and what if I'm on the ceiling at that point? You won't be for long. Again, you lay there, roll onto your back, stare at a point on the ceiling, fix your gaze, do not move your head, and then, then you'll be free to move as normal, just like this, it'll be 1G again, for a whole one and a half minutes, and then we go again, and again, and again, and again. So, I'll get out of your way, you lay, lay down. down. Yeah, lay down. It's too late now, Dylan. Try not to die. Oh my God. Oh my God. That tell is... Us, tell us what you feel. Ridiculously. I feel like my face is getting extreme Botox. Here we go. Okay. Touch off gently. That is ridiculous. I feel like I'm no freaking way. Look at the camera. Talk. Tell them how you feel. I don't know where I am right now. Feet down. Okay. That's it. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> that is going to be impossible to do a news report. Oh my gosh. Uh, double gravity. Try to lift up your legs, lift up your arm. Keep your head still, but just feel how heavy your arms and legs are. Okay, so firstly, the 2G, the double gravity, that was potentially even crazier than the floating, which sounds weird to say. Because you lay down, right? And um, that one felt not too bad. It just felt like you were really getting pushed to the ground. I'm surprised because I thought I'd feel a lot more sick. Then I tried actually sitting up, and that's when all of the blood drains, because you're sat up and it goes in, I guess, to your stomach area. That was a lot harder, and your face gets pulled down. And then at the end, I did standing, which was the, the final one when I was I was really trying to like just land in my stand mode, Superman. And that was the craziest one because the blood drains even further, and you've got to really tense your legs so it doesn't go all the way down to your freaking quads. I'm so tempted to look for Neil right now. But I'm going to remember my training and keep my head. Well, I can come in. Good job. Well up. You're a natural. That was everything we got taught, wasn't it, Neil? Did I make you proud? I'm not looking at you right now, but I'm suspecting tears in his eyes. Oh, it's, it's so emotional. You've made me very, very proud. Woo!
And then obviously, I'm sure you want to know what it feels like to float. And this is where things get tricky because it's very hard to articulate the exact feeling because everything's relative, right? Every, every sensation that I could describe to you is a comparison of what something else feels like. And the best comparison I can make is like, it's like you're underwater, right? That feeling of when you're underwater, but that water is like, so thin and you touch this side and you flip. Another thing is that you you imagine when you turn upside down, you know, the blood goes to your head, none of that. And that's what makes it really tricky about like, it just becomes really dizzy, it almost feels like you're drunk. And at points you do actually lose track of where's upside down and where's the, f yeah, where's the right way around. Another one that's pretty interesting is that your brain performs better up with zero gravity. You have better cognition. And secondly, They've done brain scans before and after you do a zero gravity experience and you have your brain literally creates new neural pathways to adapt to this experience you've never felt before. So right now, my brain is different. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that I'm evolving faster than the rest of you, but I am! Superior news, daddy! Is Daily Mail's brain superior to mine? No. I've got a different brain now. I've got unlocked a new level. Anyway, another experience that I never thought I'd have is I forgot to freaking pee. So you need to pee. I need to pee. Should we be fast? They told me to pee. They said it was going to be three hours. And I thought, oh, I didn't think actually. That was the point. And so I had to pee in this bag slash cup thing. Alex, I guess, roll the clip. Please remember to zip the ziplock closed when you are finished. Okay. Can I leave the door open so you can film no. it? <laughs> The stream has started, boys. The stream has started. Everything is going well. Now there's a little bit of anxiety beginning. We might, we might not be finished in time. Do I close off shop before we finish? Now, I think it's time to zip the bag. No worries, the One last thing. Zip up. I'm the most proud I've ever been. Can I put that in there? Okay. You okay now? That, I think I could be more proud of that than the zero gravity. But then, after peeing successfully and proudly, it was time to start looking at the experiments. Now, it's a little bit different. You're outside the experiment area. Um, you have to be uh, secured to the floor. Still just keep your head still. But now we're getting to zero G. And you can watch these guys. So you see on the treadmill this time, they're not running. They are bouncing, testing the shock into the bones, into the skeleton. Those accelerometers on the ankles, sensing what they're doing. And then to your right, they're doing this uh, tran translation exercise. Everybody's focused and working. It's very different than in the free floating area, isn't it? So this is really a mock-up of the glove box that they will have on orbit. So practicing all of these really difficult manipulations, using these thick gloves, very small pieces, it's easy to lose track of them. It's really quite a difficult task for them to do. Now here's the thing, if there was like maybe a dozen actual different experiments on there ranging from, from brain to bone to just multiple different things. But I only got to the first two, right? <laughs> Before my stomach started to turn, I, I started needing, you know, the, craving those deep breaths when you feel sick, like, <laughs> so I said, Neil, I um, I don't want to like throw up on these expensive looking contraptions. So he suggested that I go to one of the, you know, the seats and I just look out at the horizon and see what this looks like when you actually look at it. And goddamn, it is truly insane to see yourself in a passenger plane, almost vertical. Okay, so this I'm basically trying to see the horizon. Watch. Oh my. Oh. That's what we've been doing every single time. Working. Look how steep we are falling. Something. It feels like we're about to do a 360. Wow. Good job. But, as you'd imagine, that only made it worse, okay? Neil, it made it worse. In case you need. Just in case. You know what, it's becoming increasingly more likely. I really don't want to go. I think peeing was pretty far. This is gonna to be too far. But if you need to, then you need to. 
it's actually quite a natural, healthy response. Maybe if you do and you get rid of it, then you feel better again. Just but us. please remember, don't close. miss the bag and close the bag when you're done. We don't want it floating around in zero G. So by parabola only 12, I was sick. <laughs> How's it going? Very nice. Yeah? Ah, <sighs> the worst part about this is that there were still 19 to go! I was sick twice more, and by the time it got to about parabola 25, it started to feel like torture. I mean, <laughs> at the start, you can see me smiling when I'm like, oh my god, no gravity! But towards the end, I wish you could have seen me. I was like floating in this seat, eyes closed, super serious face, just like... <laughs> Ah, oh, I know it was a once in a lifetime experience, but I was fighting for my life. That's the end. How are you doing? Three bags full. You said you wanted a challenge. Did we give you a challenge? Yes. Absolutely. Would you do it any differently? No chance. I regret nothing. I regret nothing. <laughs> the ground. The solid ground for you. And you know what? I didn't expect to say this, but when we actually touched down and we felt gravity again, I said, Welcome oh, back. I love gravity. <laughs> oh, gravity. No. Come on, man. Oh. You can do it. So how was your flight? Okay, I've been thinking about the best way to describe. It's like you've discovered chocolate for the first time. And so you're, you're eating it, you're eating it, and you eat so much because it's so amazing that you get so sick and you never want to eat chocolate again. You never want to do this again. Give me five years. <laughs> five Give me years. five years. You flew very, very well. Yeah, for, actually. For the, for the first 10, 15 parabolas. Listen up. Now, this is the point where you want to listen. I have to say, our boy here is a natural at moving around in zero G, just not for too long. <laughs> We're here for a good time, not a long time. Mission accomplished. It was an absolute pleasure to fly with you. I'm sorry that we broke you. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you again. 100%. We're out. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Man, with all of that being said, I just want to say a huge shout out to Neil, to the European Space Agency, to Novaspas. This was honestly an absolute dream that very, very few people on Earth actually get to experience at some point in their life. I mean, Mr. Beast said he paid 250K to experience what I experienced for free. So I just wanna say thank you, and I'm so grateful that you chose me to have this experience. I hope I did it justice. <laughs> and I look forward to whatever the next adventure may be. I love you guys, and I'll see you again on Monday or Tuesday. Infinity and beyond. Actually, you know what? I think in honor of my parabolic adventures, these must go on the wall. Yes, they stick on the whip wall. What a beauty. What a beauty that is. Oh, the whip wall is starting to look so beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes. This is going to be the wall of whippings and experiences. This wall, by the end of maybe even next year, is gonna be a freaking masterpiece. Oh my God! Something. Something. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I have a feeling that Neil really enjoyed that one. <laughs>